Hello, I am Dr. Andal Baskar, gynecologist practicing in Delhi uh, for the past 25 years. And we are interested in doing holistic treatment for fertility and also during pregnancy. And we have been seeing very good results. And today I am going to talk about the effect of uh, role of diet and exercise in PCOS. And uh, PCO, since it is known, it is an enigma. And uh, since two decades, it has been increasing in epidemic proportions. And it poses challenges to women from menarche to menopause by way of uh, irregular periods, menorrhagia, infertility, acne, hirsutism, and in the middle age, um, diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and um, endometrial carcinoma, like that. So it uh, appears like a naughty child, very difficult to tame. And um, the treatment is a prolonged one and uh, the effects are temporary. So both the treating doctors and also the patients, it is a very frustrating thing to have PCO. So <clears throat> to look at it another way, it is like we are, uh, the treatment is like filling a leaky bucket. It seems a never ending process and the results are not very satisfactory and they are temporary. So, if we only see the hole um, and seal it and then pour water, then it's going to be effective. Similarly, if we address the root cause of polycystic ovary rather than the effects, then the treatment would be very effective and uh, so let us see what are the root causes that cause uh, PCO. So um, this is essentially, I see it as a um, change in the habits of the society. So in terms of diet, activity, sleep and thinking patterns from the previous um, generations. So what uh, we see is earlier we were having only home cooked food and now we have this fast food culture mushrooming up of restaurants, uh, sweet shops, bakeries everywhere and apart from that packaged food uh, having um, preservatives, coloring and flavoring agents. So this is the change in the diet system we have. And also earlier, the household work, that used to be a sort of exercise for us. Now, with the availability of uh, appliances in the kitchen, we have less work. And also with remote um, for TV, AC, our movement is restricted even indoors. And also we sit uh, before laptop or TV or cell phone for hours together. And this is about indoors. When we go outdoors also, we have a lot of transport system and we use lift and escalators so that the walking has come down very less. This is about activity and sleeping pattern. Earlier, we used to go to bed early and uh, we were early risers. Nowadays, nowadays it is only midnight, uh, even dinners are uh, at the midnight. And the sleeping time is uh, nearing midnight and they, they are all late risers. So this has an impact on the sleep pattern. The circadian rhythm is uh, disturbed. The essential hormones affected are serotonin, melatonin and cortisol. The other thing is stress or the thinking pattern. Earlier, um, there was the interpersonal relationship was very strong. We felt very secure. And uh, there was less stress from childhood uh, in education, job, and even marriage. Marriages are very stable. Nowadays, because of uh, less interpersonal interaction 
and competition education job and even marriage are all stressful events so with this in this social scenario there is no doubt the hormone imbalance occurs and pco is a consequence so if we need to look at the um, role of diet and activity in detail there are um, four important changes in the diet that is one is we are um, eating a um, lot of inflammatory diet one is the uh, high glycemic load diet that is simple sugar like uh, sweets chocolates ice creams and also refined carbohydrates which maida used in bakery items and the other thing is fat saturated fat like butter and the um, uh, saturated fats like butter and also uh, packaged food this trans fat this uh, packaged food contains trans fats which is uh, also very highly infl uh, inflammatory these two things apart from that the two deficiency in diets one is micronutrients the second one is mm, low fiber diet so because of this dietary changes what happens and along with the uh, sedentary lifestyle there is increase in the weight gain so this obesity when it adds on when there is more than 15% uh, when it is added to a simple obesity the resulting effect is insulin resistance we will now see what is insulin resistance insulin is a hormone secreted by pancreas and um, it is its role is to control the blood sugar by pushing the uh, glucose into the cells and when the glucose level is more it converts the it into glycogen and when it is still more it uh, it causes fat deposition so when the insulin um, resistance occurs um, when there is a defect in the insulin receptor or post receptor insulin signaling for the insulin uh, to act well it has to get bound to the receptor that is called tyrosine kinase which is an enzyme so insulin gets bound to this uh, enzyme um, tyrosine kinase and it gets phosphorylated it again activates irs1 this is a uh, insulin substrate receptor uh, insulin receptor substrate and this again activates akt and finally the glut4 um, uh, uh, molecule is attached to the plasma membrane only when glut4 is attached to the plasma membrane glucose can enter it so this entire signaling pathway insulin signaling pathway is dependent on the entry of the insulin at active functioning this inflammatory diet what we are taking by way of high glycemic load and the more of fat this causes uh, what is called as inflammation in the fat cells the fat cells produce uh, the macrophages in fat produces inflammatory molecules called cytokines like IL-6, uh, TNF-alpha, and CRP. So these inflammatory molecules affect the insulin signaling pathway, thereby insulin cannot enter or function efficiently. The other thing is the deficiency of vitamins like vitamin D, vitamin B complex, chromium, magnesium, zinc, and CoQ, and omega-3 fatty acids. This also causes this insulin receptor dysfunction so what happens is insulin resistance that means insulin cannot function effectively so that glucose is not entering into the cell so the insulin stays outside as a compensatory measure, measure more of insulin is produced that is called as hyperinsulinemia so this uh, what it converts more of fat it uh, uh, so fat deposition occurs so more uh, when there is insulin resistance there is more obesity so the earlier obesity causes uh, insulin resistance later insulin resistance causes uh, 
obesity. So this vicious circle uh, continues. The other thing is ovary is very sensitive to uh, insulin. So if we, why, insulin, what it does, it acts on the theta internal cells and it produces androgens like androstenedione and testosterone. Also, it acts synergistic, synergistically with LH. So increasing the androgen levels. Another uh, way is the SHBG is decreased, thereby the free androgen levels are increased. So when the androgen levels are increased, the follicle growth is disturbed and the PCO results. And later, these androgens are converted to estrogen by uh, aromatization. And this, when there is an excess of estrogen, it triggers more of LH. So once again, androgen is increasing. So this is one aspect. The other aspect is the estradiol, the active part of um, estrogen, active molecule, is uh, in the liver. It is conjugated with glucuronic acid and it is excreted in the urine and motion. But in the intestine, because of our junk food habit, a lot of pathogenic bacteria like E. coli is there and it produces uh, glucuronidase enzyme and it cleaves the conjugated estradiol and sets free the um, estradiol and sends it back to the bloodstream. So by way of our dietary habits, one thing is we are increasing the by inflammation by increasing the insulin level and causing hyperandrogenism. Second thing is we are effectively preventing excretion of the estrogen. So the because of this hormonal disturbance, PCO continues to be very resistant. And this is about the um, uh, diet. And um, so what are the remedial measure by way of diet we have to take? We have to take low glycemic food uh, from uh, carbohydrate. It's a complex carbohydrate. We can take uh, fruits, vegetables, whole grains and millets and also um, like proteins also we need to take. The protein should be of a good quality protein. Protein is essential because it increases the metabolic rate because one pound of protein uh, burns six calories whereas one pound of fat burns only two calories. So this protein can be of animal source and um, uh, vegetarian source. Animal source, we all know um, egg, meat and fish. And a plant source will be um, milk, grains, nuts and seeds. Though plant source is supposed to be incomplete, protein we can combine them like rice and chapati rice and uh, dal and chapati and dal so by combining the different varieties of proteins the quality of protein can be increased even in vegetarian diet so this is about uh, protein and fat we need to look at is we need to take more of unsaturated uh, fat like olive oil groundnut oil and natural fats yeah, as in almond, cashew, groundnut and coconut, uh, raw coconut. And uh, other thing is important is essential um, omega-3 fatty acid, which is seen in fish, we all know, and vegetarian, vegetarian sources, uh, walnut and flax seeds. This is about the macronutrients. The important uh, um, cornerstone of the diet for PCO is the fiber. So when there is a, we need to take fiber rich food, fiber uh, rich foods are which, uh, fruits, vegetables and grains, nuts and seeds. So when, when it comes to fruits, we need to take at least two cups of fruits. The um, uh, ideal fruits are apple, orange, um, goa, pomegranate and watermelon. When it comes to vegetables, in two and a half cups of vegetable, one cup of uh, raw vegetable as salads. That is uh, carrot, uh, tomato, cucumber. And cooked vegetables, it must be non-starchy vegetables because the calorie will be less. So they will be cabbage, cabbage, cauliflower and broccoli, all green leafy vegetables, beetroot, turnip. And these are all the uh, non-starchy vegetables we need to take. So, and the other thing is nuts and uh, seeds. 
seeds it can be flax seeds sunflower seeds um, pumpkin seeds poppy seeds and sesame seeds so this fiber has a very important role because it has it acts at two levels one is as we take food um, fiber rich food it causes fullness so that there is less rise in the glucose level less insulin spike that is one thing second thing is it is um, uh, the fiber is called prebiotic it is a good food for the good bacteria in the intestine so when there is we take lot of fiber lot of good bacteria like uh, lactic acid bacillus and bifidobacterium when they proliferate more the pathogenic bacteria becomes less so that it enhances estrogen excretion that way also it helps in uh, pco mm -hmm. uh, problem and it causes it helps in relieving constipation this is about fiber another important um, component uh, uh, component of uh, um, fiber is probiotic this is good bacteria so they are available as a, uh, as in fermented rice water uh, rice water or um, sour butter milk these are very good sources of uh, probiotics that is good bacteria so as we have already seen this uh, probiotic helps in excretion of uh, estrogen and also it helps in uh, secretion of uh, production of vitamins like uh, biotin folic acid vitamin k and helps in absorption of iron calcium magnesium and manganese so this is about the Mm, probiotics uh, another important thing is natural antioxidants that is our kitchen spices mm, garlics mm, garlic fenugreek and cinnamon 500 to 1000 mg cinnamon can be taken and ginger one or two inch pieces so and um, turmeric these are all very good natural antioxidants so that will help in the improving insulin sensitivity so this is about diet gen and uh, when we come to diet we need to take that uh, the calorie count should not be less than 1500 kilocalories and 40 percent can come from carbohydrate 30 from protein and 30 from uh, fats and uh, another thing is when we plan the diet the high calorie diet should be in the morning breakfast and low calorie diet in the evening another important thing to remember is um, that is the frequency and regularity of uh, meal time must be maintained and um, the small frequent meals is preferred to larger um, major meals because larger meals causes uh, spikes of glucose and insulin levels whereas small frequent meals uh, there is uh, low levels of uh, uh, glucose and insulin that is why they are preferred um, this is about uh, diet and how we have to take the diet uh, there is a uh, what is called green growth uh, guideline what it says is we need to take food when we are hungry when the body is hungry and not when the mind is hungry that is craving Second thing is, when we take food, we should not be distracted by watching TV or um, cell phone or reading because uh, this makes the eating mechanical. So we tend to eat more and also um, the indigestion problem is also supposed to be more. And the other thing is, we can stop eating when we are not full just before that we can stop eating and we need to relish eating we need to enjoy eating and guilty eating with guilt it must be given up because um, the feeling with which we eat has a larger bearing especially when we that's what we see in weight reduction also we'll see it later so this is about the diet we take next is the activity or the exercise so the exercise um, um, it uh, this thing has um, impact uh, how it functions is during exercise the muscles are um, in action 
so at that time the muscle takes up uh, the glucose uh, not through insulin to an uh, through an alternate pathway and also after an exercise uh, the um, muscles are very sensitive the glucose sensitivity is increased for so many hours after the exercise so that is why exercise also fuzzle forms a very important um, management tool in uh, insulin uh, sensitivity so there are two types of exercise one is one is moderately uh, intensive uh, intensive exercise that is walking cycling and swimming and at least half an hour of this exercises five days a week is enough and uh, studies have shown that um, regular exercise causes a insulin sensitivity fold 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 increase even though um, there is no weight loss this is about a uh, moderate uh, intense uh, exercise the other is uh, resistance training exercise this is lifting weights so this can be done for 8 to 12 times repetitions 1 to 3 sets can be done this can be done half an hour Mm, a day, three days a week is enough. Mm. This is very important because it promotes fat loss and it builds muscle. So it, it has a very good uh, impact on uh, insulin sensitivity increase. But the exercise is very difficult to uh, follow because of uh, the perception that we have lack of time and also lack of motivation. and we think that exercise is something very difficult so we need to um, take the our uh, activities uh, daily activities into account and formulate a small activity uh, as an exercise which can be followed very easily at a, and at a, any convenient time the one thing about the exercise and the diet what i have seen in my experiences when we do it with interest and do it regularly we get excellent results so that is why i always suggest whatever is possible for you do it with interest so um, uh, that is about exercise um, then uh, about weight reduction what i have seen weight reduction it is not that easy to follow because what the, the shape of our body is determined by our beliefs so unless we change our beliefs it is very difficult to reduce our weight so we need to change our beliefs with compassion and love not with anger not being critical and with disgust this is what happens because a uh, some women will be telling that i have been doing uh, they will be doing exercise and diet very rigorously and still not 100 grams they will uh, decrease another group is they will be following it and they will be reducing weight by 2 3 kg but after some time whatever amount of weight they have lost they are picking up i have seen it many times i am surprised it will be exactly the same weight it is because of their belief that it is very difficult for them to um, reduce so that is why they are not able to reduce even if they reduce they cannot accept it because it is not in their nature so they quickly regain their weight this is one more thing um another interesting feature is some of them they reduce weight very easily without uh, much effort i had one um, patient uh, one woman um, she came to me in january again she came in april she was having irregular periods and menorrhagia she already had two children so i suggested that she was having treatment elsewhere for quite some time but it was not working out so i asked her to just lose some weight and come and then treatment will be effective then only i will start some treatment 
when she has lost 17 kg i was really surprised and asked what she was doing she said the change she made was only taking chapati at night rather than rice other thing is and she was doing regular household work not any exercise but one thing she said i was always thinking that when i go to the doctor i should reduce weight so this thinking this uh, intention was strong in her that made uh, her lose weight very easily another college student she was also a bit uh, on the lower weight side she wanted she said she was trying to lose weight and she was not getting any result and um, she later gave it up and joined the zumba dance uh, the, um, along with her friend she started enjoying it so much she completely forgot about weight reduction and after 3 months 4 uh, months she said she has lost 20 kg these are all real like um, incidents which is i open up to me that it is the mind it is our thinking that is having the final say in these matters and we'll see it shortly the other um, so uh, for weight reduction what in our own uh, clinic what we have seen um, is we are the mothers who are taking this diet exercise willingly with interest within 2 3 months they are reducing weight and the weight is consistent and the irregular periods becoming regular and uh, so then once we go for uh, ovulation induction with the minimum dose of uh, ovulation induction agents um, we get uh, good quality and uh, conception also occurs because this increase their confidence levels that is why exercise is uh, um, exercise is very uh, important uh, but doing it willingly as a, as though it is a pleasant activity for uh, uh, mothers who want to conceive i will tell all this this diet and this exercise you are not doing for yourself you are doing for the sake of your baby the health and the intelligence and all good qualities of the babies you are passing through your egg and sperm and uh, this is the best gift you are going to give to your baby and this preparatory time is a important um, as a period so do it with interest those who do it with interest Uh, the results are really amazing and the other uh, this thing is sleep sleep also has a lot of impact on the hormone balance because it's not only the duration the quality of sleep also um, <clears throat> when the sleep is good the there is considerable amount of fat loss is there it promotes uh, healing and the cortisol level it, it is at very low uh, during the night time only in the morning time it starts rising when the sleep is disturbed the cortisol increases so that is why um, sometimes period uh, even lack of sleep causes weight gain um, so how to promote a good uh, uh, sleep so we need to make it into a uh, sleep ritual we need to um, stop uh, seeing this laptop tv and uh, switch it off uh, cell phone one or two hours one hour before going to sleep and just 20 minutes uh, earlier we can have dim light so that it can stimulate uh, sunset and have um, warm water bath and have warm liquid warm milk along with uh, banana walnut and cherry juice so later we can have some uh, gentle stretching exercise or breathing exercise uh, chanting listening to music uh, then slowly we will we can slip into sleep and uh, things to uh, notice four to six hours before we should stop doing exercise and uh, intake of coffee and tea and things like that and uh, exercise in the morning time also helps in uh, good sleep and uh, exposure to bright sunlight in the daytime helps in good uh, 
production of melatonin, which is the hormone secreted during um, sleep. This is about and uh, the lack of the short sleep, even for two weeks, is supposed to um, in decrease the insulin sensitivity by forty four percent. And uh, and then the last one is stress. That is the earth thinking attitude. When there is stress, cortisol hormone is uh, secreted, and this cortisol increases blood sugar by converting uh, proteins uh, through neoglycogenesis, and also it uh, deposits fat in the visceral area. Visceral fat deposition is due to uh, cortisol, and uh, that is one uh, reason for our increased craving of food. So. This is about uh, that is why um, when there some people when they are in depression, even though um, they don't take food, they put on weight. It is because of cortisol and irresistible um, feeling, uh, craving. That is also due to cortisol. So um, we need to change our attitude, uh, and this is when we need to. Change our attitude, change our beliefs. We need to discuss with someone, take help, and then we can change ourselves and be um, soft with ourselves. Because um, most of the obese women, I tell it's okay to be fat, accept it, don't feel guilty about it. So only when they accept themselves, it's okay to be fat. It is okay. Or well, let others uh, think whatever they want. I feel good about myself. Then slowly, I will tell you can. It is good to reduce weight. So when they keep, when they feel good about themselves and they set a target to reduce weight, then the weight reduction becomes easy. So the role of diet and exercise and thinking and sleeping in as a cause for PCO is very much shown. Improved. So the point is, we need to not only understand, we need to practice it. So to the points to remember in diet is, we need to take you know, fiber-rich food, you know, probiotics, and natural antioxidants, and uh, take um, you know, low glycemic food index and healthy fats. And it's okay to have junk food occasionally, but enjoy that. Don't go on for binging. This is the thing because if we don't take and you feel as though you are missing something, again it is not going to be useful. Even when you eat and you feel guilty, that is also not going to be mm, helpful. So, mm, what I have uh, learned lessons is: eat whatever you eat, enjoy eating, and uh, be mindful about it. Mm, then regarding exercise. Whatever little amount of walking um, or breathing, whatever exercise you do, you can do it. Uh, do it happily, and uh, good amount of uh, sleep, and uh, with a positive attitude, PCO is going to be not a not a difficult problem. It can be tackled easily. Is there any symptoms of PCOS? Yeah. Yeah. So the what is the early symptoms of uh, PCOS? It can start as uh, irregular periods um, without um, any evidence of uh, without any evidence of uh, ultrasound evidence of uh, PCOS. It can start like that. Um, then it can start as um, weight gain in some of them, and later go on to go for PCOS. This irregular periods um, alone, without any evidence of um, without any evidence of ultrasound evidence or um, uh, hyperandrogenism, that is uh, by way of uh, blood tests or Uh, clinically, uh, hirsutism or acne that can be it can start as a triggering event, especially uh, um, after marriage. 
some some people will have uh, irregular periods because of change in the um, atmosphere so and there will be pressure of uh, conception from expectation from the family so this puts pressure what starts as a um, uh, irregular periods when it continues for some time two three cycles it becomes irregular then it sets as a pattern of issue uh, later it uh, develops so this happens uh, as a initial triggering event like uh, after marriage or during um, in unmarried girls uh, when they go to hostels or when it starts the trigger initial trigger is like exam it can start like that and it uh, with weight gain sudden weight gain then they go on for uh, pcos these are the early symptoms and which type of food can take in pco that is what uh, uh, i have told now um, the fiber probiotic and natural antioxidants and low glycemic food so in our language we people take plenty of um, fruits vegetables and uh, millets uh, like you can have uh, ragi and uh, millets we can have uh, so that is uh, important uh, food and rice brown rice or single polished rice we can have i always advise uh, rice is only once mm, the other thing you can they can have uh, uh, other um, kind of uh, food whether it is uh, more of protein in the morning or the evening as a uh, by way of snacks they can have so this is the type of food they and with plenty of liquids um, like buttermilk um, lemon juice green tea like that they can have uh, along with the food uh, and early dinner is preferable around 6 to 6:30 if they can finish their meal that would be better this is the type of food in this you know i would suggest so today we have seen um, the role of diet and exercise in pcos so it is not only the diet and uh, exercise and it is the way we have uh, we have to take the attitude uh, towards it we need to change and then the pco is no more a problem because uh, once uh, the uh, there is a study in adelaide uh, university they have conducted study of uh, 18 overweight women for a period of 6 uh, months so they have uh, seen that there is the irregular periods becoming uh, regular and um, the menorrhage are getting controlled and also there is a 71% increase in the insulin sensitivity and lh reduced by 39% and the central fat decreased by 11% so this is the um, impact of uh, role of diet and exercise and when we do it with uh, willingly without any doubt and uh, then medical treatment becomes very short it need not be prolonged and it can be uh, beat in the um, case of acne or hirsutism um, uh, role of diet uh, and exercise weight reduction has helped so also in fertility so that once this lifetime this lifestyle change should be a lifelong habit that is what is very important if that we follow then um, pco will not be uh, much of a problem as and when problem arises we can have a treatment for a short while and this lifestyle change because um, because the insulin levels are going to go down androgen levels are going to go down uh, the problem will not be uh, for a long time and treatment need to be prolonged so this is what uh, pco um, in pco it is not the treatment that is going to matter to make the treatment more effective we need to look into 
diet, exercise, and our thinking and sleeping and patterns. Thank you. Which type? What are some of the? Yeah. Mm, apart from diet, um, what I would, what I am doing is put them on insulin sensitizer. Mm, that is metformin is very good. The other thing is um, our myo inositol uh, combination, myo inositol, metformin, myo inositol, and dekairo inositol combinations. They are very good. Uh, so. Once the polycyst, when we can assess it by there, uh, by clinically, the irregular periods uh, becoming regular, the weight reduction, 5 to 10% weight reduction uh, is also a good guide. Mm. And the other thing is doing in the ultrasound, when the cyst size comes from ovarian volume coming down. So that would be very then we can go on for ovulation induction in case of mm, fertility. When they have irregular periods, uh, this itself will help. Otherwise, we can have a short course of uh, uh, progesterone for withdrawal uh, for cycle regulation. That we can do. So because of lifestyle change, these treatments will not uh, take uh, longer. And even after stopping the treatment, uh, because of the lifestyle change, the effect will be uh, continued. Otherwise, what happens? Uh, only as long as we put them on progesterone uh, or OCP, the uh, periods are going to be regular. After stopping, after six months or one year, again, they're going back to their irregular periods. But once they follow the lifestyle change, this uh, um, treatment, our treatment is going to be only for a short while. Otherwise, then, um, PCO is not going to be a big problem. 